The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. There was one of the Pharisees called Nicodemus, a leading Jew, who came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who comes from God, for no one could perform the signs that you do unless God were with him. And Jesus answered, I tell you most solemnly, unless a man be born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said, how can a grown man be born? Can he go back into his mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, unless a man is born through water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be surprised when I say, you must be born from above. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. That is how it is with those who are born of the Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. The Easter cycle runs in a really wonderful way. The first week of Easter in the octave, we have all of the appearances of Jesus post-resurrection. So, so we get to read all the different ways in which Jesus interacted with the people in his risen body and, and to see how they did not understand and then suddenly understanding comes through some key being born from above. Now, in our second week, what we have is baptism. And, and a whole understanding now of what it is to be born again from water and the Holy Spirit. Next week, what we will have is a whole understanding of Eucharist, which actually starts this week and will continue on next week with the Bread of Life discourse. And, and it's an amazing thing how the church organizes herself because... When you think of the people who left Egypt, first they had to go through the water, and then they had the bread in the desert. And, and that's a pattern. That's a type for how the Easter people are being catechized to understand what, what God is doing, that, that this is not just a new thing that he is doing. It is a thing that he has done before that he's doing in a brand new way. Now, our text today is one of those magnificent texts from John's Gospel. And we'll be reading John for the next while. And, and, and Jesus is saying that, you know, this Pharisee, Nicodemus, he, a leading Jew, and he comes to Jesus by night. Now, we remember that in the Passion narrative, as soon as G Judas left to go to betray Jesus, John said, and night fell. Night is a characteristic not of the time outside, but of the state of mind of the person that he's speaking to. Nicodemus is, is coming at night because his mind is darkened to the truth of the kingdom of God. And this is why this exchange is so powerful. I tell you solemnly, unless a man is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. One of the challenges if the church faces today is that we are reading the Scripture and Christianity at night with our minds darkened because they are not allowed to be born from above. We may have been baptized, but we have not yet come to the perspective of seeing the whole of reality, the whole world and everything in it from the perspective of God and from God's intention in the world. If we were born from above, we would not be panicking in this time of, of COVID-19. If we were born from above, what we would see is the perspective of God at work in everything that we are doing now. And we would know and be excited to see how God will work His thing through this. Being born from above is, is not just a, 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 a statement of Jesus to Nicodemus. It is an invitation to Nicodemus, to you, and to me. 
He goes on again, and Nicodemus said, how you could put a grown man back into his mother's womb and have him born a second time? Well, of course, that can't happen. So he says, I tell you solemnly, unless a man is born through water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, this, this is it. Being born from water and the Holy Spirit. Remember that John was baptizing with water. And he says, and one will come after me who's, I'm not fit to undo his sandal strap. And he will baptize with water and fire. And, and that's another image of the Spirit. The, the John prophesies that Jesus will come baptizing with water and Spirit. Water and fire, water and the Holy Spirit. And, and what does that mean? And, and Jesus is saying something that you and I have to grapple with deeply. Because many times the way we see things are, is a fleshy way. We see it through the eyes of the human being, through the eyes of science, of sociology, of, 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 of humanity, of, of, of our own inner distress. We, we, we interpret everything through these fleshy eyes we have. And what Jesus is inviting us to is to be born of water and the Holy Spirit. And that's why we're staying in the upper room for these days of Pentecost. And that's why we're staying here, so that we can have the renewal of our mind to start seeing the kingdom through the eyes of the kingdom and through the eyes that Jesus gave to us when we were baptized. And, and this movement from having been baptized to living as a baptized person is what we are being taught this week. And that is a big, big difference. There are many people who have been baptized who live as if they are unbaptized and unbelievers. They live in a way where we see the whole mystery not as a mystery of God, but as a thing that we do just because we do it. And, and, and that thing we do just because we do it is not sufficient. If you are going to be a Catholic, if you are going to live in this time, if you are going to live as a child of Jesus Christ, and ultimately, as he would say, if you're going to live by entering in the kingdom of God. What the disciples experienced at the at the time of the resurrection, is this bump into the kingdom of God. They were literally catapulted in because all of a sudden they understood what they were dealing with was so different. If we look at our first reading from, from Acts of the Apostles, which is an example of what it is to be born from above. This is our same Peter, you know. This is our same Peter and the same John who did not get it. And look at them now fearless proclaimers of the incredible love of God, understanding that from before all time, God intended to bring this man, Jesus, who is Son of God and who is Lord of history. And it says that they, 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 when they prayed, it was you who made heavens and earth and the seas and everything in them. And they understand that Jesus is God. How did that happen? Because they were born from above. Their eyes were open, and they can now see a reality that they could not see before the resurrection. Where did that happen? In the upper room. And that's why we're going to be here for the next while, because we have to, like them, have our eyes open to the reality that Jesus Christ is not just a historical figure, that this one is Lord, is God, is Lord of heaven, of earth. He made everything, and all times belong to him. Look at what they, they say. They, remember, they were just released from prison. And uh, they were told, the chief priests and the elders had said to them that they were to say nothing in the name about this man, Jesus. And what do they do next? First, they praise God that they were able to suffer for the name. They praise God that they were able to suffer for the name. Then they quote scripture and read. Interpret the scripture to show how this scripture always spoke to Jesus who would be coming and who is Lord of all history. That the, the, the Herod and Pilate conspired against Jesus with the Jews and, in the, and the Gentiles. And this conspiracy is the fulfillment of the scripture. And they go on to show that now, Lord, take note of their threats and help your servants to proclaim your message with boldness and stretching out your hand to heal and do the work of miracles and marvels through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. 
They have interpreted their whole world through this one lens that Jesus Christ is God, risen from the dead. Have you yet come to that work? Has that work yet happened inside of you? This is what Nicodemus is, is grappling with, and this is the offer to you, that we must be born from above and reinterpret everything through these sacred eyes that he gives us, the eyes of faith that we have been offered through our baptism. And you know, the text ends by saying, and the house in which they were rocked, which was a confirmation that the Spirit was saying to them that not only your interpretation and your prayer, it is absolutely true. And Spirit is now confirming what the, the apostles are experiencing through the revelation of God. This is what it is to be born from above. And this is what it is to have our eyes and, and here the last part of our gospel text. When you're born from above, the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. That is how it is with one who is born from above. That the Spirit will lead and guide us in ways that we will not understand, but we will know because we will smell it, we will taste it, we will see it, we will understand that this is something from above. Brothers and sisters, many, many of us as Catholics have been baptized, but our eyes have not yet been opened to the full truth of the mystery of the gospel, to the full truth of who Jesus is. And because our eyes have been darkened and, and, or, or not yet fully opened, we have lived as if we are living in this world in our own steam and by our own understanding. And I am inviting you to stay with us in the upper room as, as we have our mind reordered and organized through the principles of Jesus Christ, who is from above and who wants us to see from above because that's what's required for us to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And that's the invitation for us. The kingdom of heaven is that place of harmony and peace where all things are in well order because we understand that whatever chaos we might be living in here below is not chaos for God because everything is working for good for God and for his people and for his kingdom. And everything that we are into here below is, is, is a way of catapulting us into this amazing way of seeing, living, and being. That the, the transformation of the apostles is the same transformation he wants for you and for me, that we will be bold proclaimers of the love of Jesus Christ wherever we are.